festive way to welcome a woman who's come over. I have better things to do than to stand around and have you criticize my choice of pastry. I did volunteer you. No, I, I wasn't criticizing. I was just mentioning that since the late... <clears throat> More punch. Don't get your hopes up, Mr. Kaufman. It's only 2% alcohol. Do me a favor, will you skim off the 2% and pour it in the glass? Well, what do you think of all the excitement that you and Pete have caused? Wouldn't it be interesting to begin an exchange program for teachers? I must have been out of my head when I agreed to it. You love the idea and you know it. I like the idea. Like. That was before I had to wade through 30 pounds of government regulations in triplicate yet. Cheer. Don't worry. It'll be worth it. Mrs. Hughes sounded fantastic from her letters. Well, everybody, here she is, Mrs. Dora Hughes. Let's start with... Uh, oh, Liz, I'd recognize anywhere. <laughs> My dear, you're exactly like your letters. <laughs> uh, Seymour Kaufman, uh, I'm the one in triplicate. Welcome. Oh, yes. Dear Mr. Kaufman. <laughs> gently, gently. <laughs> You've been a darling about the whole thing. <laughs> oh, I knew I was going to love it. Let's start with... Uh, uh, Lloyd Hollis, Chairman, English Department. An unknown quantity. Tell me all about yourself, Mr. Hollis. The English is supposed to be cold and aloof. She just blew their image. She's a very warm and open woman, isn't she? Mm -hmm. I don't think Hollis and Miss Price are taking <laughs> You've been a darling. Some of the teachers are going to take to her. Quantity. Tell me all about your interest. And I want all your opinions about American morality, Miss Price. For instance, do you believe in premarital relations? What do you mean exactly? I think you better get over there before she tells her exactly. <laughs> oh, Mrs. Well, uh, Hughes, excuse me. How would you like to have dinner with Liz and I tonight? Oh, how lovely. Uh, but no way too fancy, love. I'm not really dressed. Oh, no. Just a little out of the way place I discovered. Liz's place. I'm so happy everything worked out. You're finally here. I never would have managed it if it hadn't been for you two darlings pulling for me at this end. I do appreciate it. Lovely. Uh, but no way too fancy. Master. Oh, I'm sure I shall. Who knows? I may want to stay on a little longer. Of course, I would have a little trouble getting around your immigration laws if I did. Well, you could always marry. Master. Oh, I'm sure I shall. Uh, what's, uh, Seymour? Getting around your immigration laws. Seymour? Uh, Mr. Kaufman. Oh, please forgive me. I call everybody by his first name. It was the way we did it at our school back home. Everybody was on a first name basis with everybody else, students and teachers alike. I'm not sure they're quite ready for that here at Whitman, Mrs. Hughes. Dora, please. Well, Pete, what happens at one school can happen at another. A school is a school, whether it's in England or America. Not necessarily. But that's one of the reasons you're here, isn't it? To show our students there are many ways to do things. And you've got so much to give. I could feel it even in your letters. You, you have such enthusiasm for teaching. Well, there's nothing like it, is there? That burst of excitement you feel when you know you've made contact, awakened something. Oh, please interrupt me. I'm talking about my favorite subject again, love. Ours, too. You know, Dora Whitman isn't the most progressive school in the world, but I think you'll find it interesting teaching here. Interesting? I'm sure I'll find it fascinating. I'll show you to your room, Mrs. Hughes. Now, you must remember when the bell sounds, that signals the end of the period, of course. Now, don't forget, in your creative writing class, the seating plan is already posted. Now, the attendance sheets are to be initialed, but not signed. The health slips are to be signed, but not initialed. And on these pink duplicate registration blanks, you must make sure it goes through the card. Oh, aren't students amazing? Give them different accents and they could be the same ones I just left in Chelsea. Mrs. Hughes, were you listening? Uh, oh, yes. Uh, sign. Um, mm -hmm. uh, initial. Oh, yes. Uh, initial, sign, go through carbon. <laughs> oh, well, here we are, room 312. <laughs> Thank you so much, Lord. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Um, excuse me. The seating chart puts me behind Jason. I was wondering if I could change. If I sit back there, the only thing I'll see is the back of his head. Oh, by all means, love, sit wherever you want. Oh, and the rest of you, too, sit wherever you please. 
Change every day if you want to. It might help us to get new perspectives on things. You mean it? Well, of course I do. Now sit wherever you like, love. <laughs> As long as you'll be happy. Now, is everybody happy? Good. I'm Dora Hume. And if it's all right with you, let's not start right in with all that calling out of the names business. It's far too impersonal. In time, I'll get to know what your names are and who you are. Yes? You're, uh... Helen Loomis. Mrs. Hughes, if you don't know our names, how can you take attendance? Attendant. Oh, dear, yes, that was that uh, blue sheet here, wasn't it? Now, where is that? All right, then. Uh, is everybody here who is supposed to be here? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Good. Attendance done. Oh, uh, yes, you're... Uh... Rhoda Zagor. I left my notebook in my locker. Could I go and get it? You know, for when you give out assignments. Oh, I'm not going to be giving out any assignments in this class, Rhoda. No, no, I'd much rather have us just talk to each other about writing, about ideas, about words. Then when you feel you want to say something, well, work it out on a piece of paper and show it to me. But I don't understand. You mean there aren't going to be any rules in this class? Not at all. There are two rules. First, I don't want any more talk about rules. <laughs> And second, only show me the writing that you like yourself. Now, I don't care what it is. An essay, a short story, a sequel to War and Peace, some poems. Poems? Apparently, love, you don't think poetry has a place in your life. It don't exactly turn me on, either. I see. Poetry was perfectly all right way back in the uh, 18th century someplace for someone who... Excuse me. You're really terribly bored, aren't you? What? There's nothing worse than to feel that you're forced to be someplace you don't want to be. Please feel free to leave. Huh? I said, feel free to leave. If any of you want to go, please leave. Come back whenever you feel like it. You mean I can just split? Uh, split? <laughs> I like that. <laughs> We were talking about poets being hopelessly out of date and old-fashioned. But are they? You know, I'll bet you've memorized a lot of marvelous poetry. Teacher, you have the wrong man. Hello, darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again. Because a vision softly creeping left its seeds while I was sleeping. And the vision that was planted in my brain still remains. Within the sound of sound. But that's a song from Simon and Garfunkel. Right. Simon and Garfunkel, Lennon and McCartney, Jim Webb. Well, they're all craftsmen with as much genius as the poets that we are going to be talking about. Now, take the phrase, the sound of silence. Yes, sir. I always wondered about that. I was never sure how silence could have a sound. That's the point of the whole thing. See, even though th there's sounds all around us, there's no... Communication? Right. Everybody's talking and nobody's listening. So it's the same as... It's actually the same as silence. Good. Mr. Kaufman, all the first period kids are still in her room. And the second period kids are jammed up in the hallway, two and three deep. It's impossible. Oh, no doubt. Oh, that's perfect. Like the uh, hollow sound in the phrase, all the lonely people, where do they all come from? Um, excuse me, Mrs. Hughes. Uh, folks, we seem to be having a little trouble with the bells today. Would you all go to your next class, please? Now, darlings, think of Eleanor Rigby. Think if you know any Eleanors in your life. All right, folks, come on in. Take your seats. Let's move along, please. Uh, Mrs. Hughes, yes. may I speak to you a moment, please? Oh, thank you, Come in. All right, let's move along, folks. Move along. We're not going to get an education in the hall. Oh, let's the go. Oh, lonely 
people, where do they all come from? What a haunting phrase that is. Yes, well, we must get together and discuss the relative merits of song lyrics one of these days, Mrs. Hughes. But right now, I'd like to know about all these students that were piled up in the hall. Did you hear the bell? Well, I suppose I did. But we were onto something really stimulating. I thought that was much more important. Oh, that's wonderful. Uh, Mrs. Hughes, I know you're accustomed to a different system than we use here, but bells are very important in a school this size. Please try to observe them. I will, Seymour. Yes. Well, all right. Uh, Mr. Kaufman. Oh, yes. Uh, we also send in attendance sheets. Yes, attendance sheets. Small thing. And uh, moreover, we have a lesson plan which does not include the Beatles, Mrs. Hughes. Dora, please. I have my own lesson plan. The students decide what they feel like writing. Your students decide. That's not what we do here. You should try it then, Lloyd. Did you see? Students can't possibly create anything until they've opened up to the joy of learning. The writing will come. Have you ever really listened to the Beatles, Lloyd? Not if I could help it. I'm not exactly a rock and roll fan. Simon and Garfunkel? Well, Mr. Dixon, I suppose you've heard about the crisis your friend Mrs. Hughes has created for us. Are you sure she's the one who's creating the crisis? Oh, I suppose I am. No regard for schedules or regulations, no lesson plan, students jamming the hallways, total chaos. Oh, come on. Don't you think we can handle this situation without falling apart? You know what she calls me? No, what? Lloyd. It could be worse. Uh, listen, I've got to get to my analyst appointment. Is there going to be some kind of a vote taken? Vote? Why should we take a vote? Oh, I thought there was going to be some kind of a vote taken. No, there's not going to be a vote. Mr. Kaufman, we have a very serious problem here. What do you intend doing about it? Uh, listen, just in case there is some sort of a vote here. Yes, Mr. Weisgarten, what? Put me down with the majority. Mr. Kaufman, I will say it again. What do you intend to do about this? Hold on, slow down. Aren't you being a little rough on her? Oh, yeah, of course, you will defend her. You're one of the ones responsible for bringing her here in the first place. Well, all I'm trying to say is, why don't you spend less time talking about her and just a little more time talking with her? I would like to, but who can get a word in edgewise? Yeah, right. All right, all right now, come on, everybody. Now, let's settle down. People are debating, people are talking about voting. Now, let's get one thing straight. A high school is not a democracy. A high school is a benevolent dictatorship. Now, why don't you all listen to your benevolent dictator? Now, give the woman a chance. She's missed a few bells and her methods are a little bit different. But after all, what's she really done? Mr. Kaufman, uh, do you have any idea what happened to room 312? Well, just taking a stab in the dark, I'd say it was still right up there next to 313. No, the class. The entire class is missing. And so, as my career as a dictator sinks slowly into the West, my treat. <laughs> I suppose you're not wondering why I called you here. You're right. We figured it out. Mrs. Hughes? More teachers complaining? Well, not more, but the ones that are suddenly seem to have a lot of drag with the Board of Education. In the last few hours, the phrase disruptive influence has gained vibrant new meaning around here. Do you think she's a disruptive influence? Look, I like the woman. I love the way the kids respond to her. I love her enthusiasm. All right, she's a little unorthodox, slightly disorganized, but disruptive influence? Yes. How can you say that? She's getting through to kids nobody's been able to reach before. Oh, there's no question about her ability to teach. But the fact is that this brilliant teacher happens to be a kooky lady who's antagonized a lot of people. Now, I've defended her right up to the wall, but frankly, I'm running out of ammunition. 
What are you going to do? Well, if you mean, am I going to throw her out in the cold with snowflakes on her eyelashes? No. This time of the year, she's probably tanned to death. You still haven't told us what you're going to do. Well, you see, if I talk to her, it's going to look like I'm threatening her. But if she were to hear the same thing from friends... Oh, perhaps I'm being too subtle. Let me put it another way. I'm asking you two to do my dirty work for me. Well, I guess we should be the ones to talk to her. Good. Thanks. This weekend might not be a bad time. Some of the kids mentioned a picnic. She'll be there. We could talk to her then. Yeah, she probably would take it better coming from us. You really believe that? No. Hi, Mr. Dixon. Ms. McIntyre. You be here next week, too? Next week? Hey, do you do this every week? Oh, yes. We never felt there was enough time to cover everything we wanted to talk about in class. I don't believe it. There are kids here who we had to hold a gunpoint to get them in class. <laughs> Which makes what I have to say a lot tougher. I felt there was something troubling you ever since you arrived. The last thing I ever expected to hear myself talking about was rules and regulations. Oh, dear, I do seem to have trouble with those, don't I? But the school has to be run that way. But why are you two talking to me about this? You're not in trouble because of me, are you? No. But then I must be in trouble, mustn't I? But it can't be too serious. In time, they'll adjust to my methods. But there isn't any time. There's already a lot of pressure. Either I change or uh, I go, is that it? I'm not sure I can change. We're not asking you to change. You're too good a teacher for us to tell you what to do. And there's got to be a way for a teacher as good as you to be able to function within this system. There is. If you can do it, I can try. Hey, come on, everybody. Soup's on. Mrs. Hughes, I finished that thing I told you about. I don't know what else to call it. It's half poetry and half... Oh, I don't know what, but it's done. I hope you like it. Do you like it, Ellen? Oh, I love it, but I'm prejudiced. Oh, thank you. Take your seats, everyone. Roger. Would you come here, please? Take attendance, please, Roger. Take attendance? Yes, Roger. We're going to start taking attendance? Yes, Roger. Oh, and class, while Roger's doing that, take out your notebooks and take down today's assignment. You mean an assignment? Like a regular, you tell us what the topic is and we write a composition on it? That's exactly what I mean, dear. No talking, please. Well, the bell is about to go. You can finish up tomorrow. Oh, and class, starting tomorrow, you'll all be sitting in permanent seats. I thought we were supposed to sit in different seats each day in order to see things from different perspectives. Well, starting tomorrow, you'll be seeing things from one perspective, love. One. It's hard to conform when they don't know you If they knew you, would they try? The love in your heart touched a small few Now you must go Yeah, Mr. Kaufman, I would like to speak to him.
Hello, everybody. Mr. Hollis. Oh, why are you all so glum? Oh, of course. Today's the day she's leaving, isn't it? You mean you don't have it marked in red on your calendar? Nice of you to come down, Hollis. You gonna play a little old Lang Syne on your pitch pipe? Now, why am I getting all this? After all, the woman resigned. She just couldn't cut it here. If you think she couldn't cut it, look at these. Some of her students' papers. As head of the department, they're your responsibility now. I'll pass them on to her replacement. You're not in the least bit curious, are you? Not specially. Don't you care about anything beside missed schedules and broken rules? That's the sum total of Mrs. Hughes? Are you trying to tell me she didn't disrupt the whole school? Of course she did. But there's more to her than that. I've read those. I have too. Why don't you take the time? Why do you two keep harping on that? I have read thousands of papers. What's so special about these? Mr. Hollis, they happen to be good writing. A little undisciplined, sure. A little rough, sure. But they're original. Open, honest. Okay, so she could make it here at Whitman. But there was a creative spark somewhere in that chaos. And it was great to see it happen in the kid's handwriting. How about it? Hello, darlings. I just dropped in to say my last goodbye. Well, Mrs. Hughes, I'm sure I speak for the whole department when I say we're sorry to see you go. My dear Lord, why on earth do you say things you don't really mean? You're not sorry at all. You're absolutely delighted that things can return to the status quo now, aren't you? Darling, everybody can't be like everybody else. Now, can they? <laughs> Wouldn't it be a dull old world if they could? Oh, I see you have my students' papers. Yes. I thought I'd take them home tonight and read them. Really, Lloyd? I said I'd read them. I will read them. I am the head of the department. Isn't that fine? Isn't that just fine? You will write, won't you? I will, Dora. In triplicate. <laughs> See you all. Huh? Oh, never mind. I can hardly believe it. Hollis giving in. Well, he agreed to read them, that's all. Well, at least that's the beginning. Just a bad glimmer of beginning, my dear. Oh, such a pity I have a plane to catch. What do you mean? I was just wondering what would have happened if I'd had a little bit more time with them. Let's see, I, I could have brought the conversation around to uh, attendance sheets. <laughs> Go. Tell me again, Mr. Hollis. Hmm? I keep forgetting. Oh, Mr. Hollis, excuse huh. me. I got the compositions you left on my desk. Did you get a chance to read them? I read them. And what did you think? A lot of misspellings, Mr. Dixon. A lot of misspellings. That's it? As the lady said, not everybody is alike. That's about the size of it. Well, thanks for looking them over. Sorry I bothered you. Tell me again what that fellow's name is, Mr. Hollis. What fellow? You know, the one you wanted me to listen to. Now, what did you say his name was? Simon Garfunkel? <laughs> 